there are so many series that get requested on this channel so many characters that people ask me to make videos about but none more than this series because by far this has to be the most requested series that i have on my channel there are shows with menaces there are shows with demons there are shows that don't care about their own life because they're too worried about enacting pain on others but then there are series that are just mad sus meme worthy eccentric zesty and those motherfuckers are low homosexual can i say that it doesn't even matter today we are here finally to talk about jojo's part five uno dos tres cuatro cinco cinco oh and we just passed cinco de mayo so you already know what it is I mean, it was seven days ago, but that's not the point I'm trying to make. But just as long as y'all been requesting this series is how long this season is. 39 episodes. So, you know, I got to cut it in half, man. Double the content for y'all, though. Double the length. Pa pause. Double the length. Anyways, y'all, make sure y'all get this to 15,000 likes so y'all can get the next part. Y'all ain't getting it until you hit that like go on God. Our story starts off with Giorno. Now, 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 uh-huh. He's not to be confused with it ain't delivery, it's the Giorno, yo. This is a whole different breed. Also, I'm just letting y'all know I'm gonna mess up a lot of names on this because niggas out here sounding like Olive Garden menu items. Why does your name Bruschetti, Bruschetto, Bruschetti, Pesci, like all of these dumbass names? JoJo's Part 5 brought to you by a Super, Super Mario, Mario Brothers. Brothers. Like, bro, that, that's basically what's going on here. Now, first we meet Giorno, who I have an inkling is the son of somebody that is literally a menace that I think I'm going to do a video on this month. I, and that's Dio. Well, I think at least he is Dio's son, just because he has a picture of this in his wallet. Now, unless this man is on some weird ass Playboy where he's just idolizing this man Dio in this spectacular body. I don't know how to call that spectacular. I, I'm assuming that it's got to be a son. Now, in this season, we got our homie Big Joseph, the GOAT. Now, in this season, we also got two characters we've seen before. We got Koichi. He's got Act 3. The little that's always like, bitch. Oh, oh. <laughs> and then we got the homie Joseph. You already know Joseph, man. He got the hat hair. Why is his hat and hair connected like that? But you already know, man. That man got the fresh ass suit. You know what I'm saying the Elvis Presley joint. The, you know what I'm saying, I'm just saying. Anyways, off the early, we meet Jordan when we realize this is about his bag, bro. Because he meets Koichi off the early and straight finesses this nigga. Steals his whole entire luggage. Now, I'm not going to lie, yo. I was a little bit tight when he stole my man luggage. I was thinking just off of this that he had to be some sort of bad guy. But then I realized that this whole season and part is... I keep calling it season, but it's part. My fault, y'all. I know y'all JoJo fans probably mad at me for saying that. But this whole part is based off of crime syndicates and gang stars, which is just gangster, but in a cool JoJo way. You know how a Rocky is. It doesn't even matter. But my, my, my point is this whole thing is based off of, like, crime syndicate mob bosses and copos and all that shit. So I realized that, you know, Jordan just like any other criminal we doing criminal activities i'm not gonna rat on him i hope y'all don't either don't end up like six nine and definitely don't end up like gunner in this rico case with young thug i'm just saying so finally after he steal koichi luggage koichi low ass finally caught up to this nigga. now they talking in mid interaction this nigga Jorno grows a tree out of the ground i realized at this point that he's a stand user and apparently he can like turn living matter into other living things i ain't gonna lie yo his stand looks mad broken i'm gonna come all the way clean Imagine you talking to somebody, you having a conversation with them, and in mid sentence, they turn into the Tarzan. This thing just grows a tree out of the ground. Yo, yo, can you hear me from down there? Little nigga, play. I'm just saying. After this whole interaction, we don't see Koichi and Joseph for a while. I don't know why or where they're at. Maybe we'll see them later because so far, I've only seen up to 18 episodes for the first half of this video, and I haven't seen them since. So, I mean, uh, uh, who knows? But after all this happens, Jorno gets on a train, and there's a man sitting there. A man in a very, very clean ass suit. Now, I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw this, I instantly thought of, I think I'm cute. I know I'm sexy. I got that look. Yo, this nigga look like HBK. This nigga has a Shawn Michaels suit on. Yo, somebody don't get this a WrestleMania match. But it turns out this guy's name is Bruno, bro. And we meet Bruno for the first time on this train. And him and Jorno have a very intimate and weird conversation. I'm not gonna lie. So in this conversation, Bruno's getting real close to this nigga Giorno, and he's asking him about <laughs> if he's a liar. Of course, you know, Giorno's like, no, I don't lie. Like any criminal would. Of course, you're not going to tell somebody you're a liar. So then Bruno just believes him. He's like, huh, you don't look like a liar. And he gets off the train. I'm thinking that's all that we're going to see of Bruno for a while. But then out of nowhere, this man peeks his head back through the window and licks the sweat off of this nigga Giorno. Whoa, pause, hey, yo, flag on the play, bro. Did you just lick this nigga sweat? He was like, 
Yep, you taste like a liar. How do you know what liars taste like? Bro, if we don't get a zesty count, hey, yo, I ain't gonna lie. Editor, put up a zesty counter, bro, because that was zesty. I'm not gonna lie, at this point, just throw some other zesty tallies up, yo. First off, for these fits. Secondly, this man Giorno had a Dio picture in his wallet that better be your dad, boy. Zesty moment. Zesty, zesty, zesty. That's three zesty moments already. I'm not going to play with y'all. This is a zesty. Yo, this, yo, this part is zesty. I ain't going to hold you. This Italian dressing. Like, 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 I'm talking zesty like that. Like, 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 like Olive Garden salad. Yo, and y'all know the breadsticks be hitting with the salad. I'm just saying. So, anyways, after he finds out that this Giorno was a liar, him and Giorno get to scrapping. And we find out that this Bruno also has a stand called Zipper Man. Now, Zipper Man is a little bit cool. I like the way that his stand works. He basically can zip niggas or unzip niggas. Again, pause. Zesty moment. Zesty counter. Oh, you unzipping? <laughs> Anyways, you can zip or unzip parts of people's bodies, parts of like whatever he hits, basically. Anything. Anything that he touches, he can unzip and zip. And and, and it like, I guess it's uh, is he creating another universe? Like, it's not a universe. Is there like a parallel world within the zip? I don't I don't really know, but but, but he, he can attach, detach things, walk through things, like you know what I'm saying? He different. Now after these things get to scrapping a little bit, we get a little Giorno backstory. Now, this is where we get the whole gang star thing. Basically, Giorno helped this gangster one day who was like a very top nigga. He's a he's a toppity top top ass nigga. Very, very up there ass nigga. You feel me? He helps him one day. These guys are looking for him. And he's like, nah, that nigga went that way. And he points him in the wrong direction, saving this guy's life. Ever since then, this gangster has protected Jorno. No matter what has happened since then, my nigga been looking out for Jorno. You feel me? And that's some real shit. I ain't gonna lie. Ever since this happened, he looked up to this nigga. He wanted to be a gangster himself. And I ain't mad at him, yo. Everybody wanted to be a gangster when I was growing up. Shit. A lot of y'all still want to be gangsters. Y'all be on the internet acting crazy like y'all really about that. But boy, if y'all don't stop playing for somebody dox y'all, somebody get y'all IP address and get y'all blicked up in real life, y'all be talking crazy. I'm just saying. So anyways, they get to scrapping. This man, Bruno, after they get to mixing each other, runs off. This man, Giorno, cannot find him anywhere. He's like, yo, where is this nigga at? Yo, I cannot find this nigga. He is literally looking everywhere. Bro looked like Zoro for a second. He was down, lost man. as shit. But then he realized that this nigga was hiding in a fly. Now, I ain't gonna hold you, bro. I ain't gonna hold you, bro. This shit different with the zippers. The amount of shit that he probably smelt going in that fly. I'm just saying. But anyways, he ends up finding this shit, but he doesn't finish him off. And he tells him, it's, yo, he doesn't finish him off? Pause. Yo, put a zesty counter. Yo, zesty tally for me, yo. This time, that's on me, yo. I ain't gonna lie. I shouldn't even have said that. Ding! Zesty counter, nigga. But anyways, after this, he doesn't finish his dude. Yo, I just said it again. Zesty counter. Anyways, after this, he doesn't defeat him? Is defeat? I don't even know. It that was mad sus. Yo, I, what am I saying with the finish of all that? That's crazy. He doesn't beat the dude up. He can beat him up. Pause. Ding. He doesn't end up. <laughs> he doesn't end up defeating him after this, yo. That's so funny, yo. Like, I'm just saying. But he says it's because he's a good guy. It's like, you're a good guy. I don't want to. I don't want to. You know what I'm saying? And I wasn't mad at that. He says that he wanted to join him. He wants to join the mafia. And Bruno was like, oh, okay. That's cool. You can join my team, but you have to pass. The Capo's test, the big nigga Papo. And this is when we finally meet Papo. And <clears throat> y'all know there's no way I'm not going through this whole review without flaming this big, roly poly built ass nigga pa Papo. Come here, waddle your ass to the front, boy. Cause you know I'm about to get you a uh, biscuit Oliver wife looking at nigga. Dr. Robotnik built ass nigga. Dr. Eggman looking ass nigga. Uh, Egg timer built ass nigga. Hey, you had a great fall, didn't you? Humpty Dumpty looking ass. Like, hey, bro. Hey, lift your left titty up. I bet you got a chunk roast under it, boy. Big ham in your pockets, boy. What's in your pockets right now? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Pop tarts. Uh, oh, you got a frozen banquet meals in here? Nick? Some Lunchables in your back pocket? Nick? I bet you don't even have a license in your wallet. You got a fruit roll up in that bitch. Popo, you don't walk. Nick? You scoot on your butt, fat ass. Nick? Popo don't walk. He jumps on the sled and he got a whole team of huskies pulling him. The Ice Age stopped woolly mammoths, but it didn't stop you, big built ass. Nick? The nastiest shit look like a cross between the penguin from Batman and Majin Boo. I know y'all heard the Baltimore in that boo. I'm just saying. Your name comes automatically in caps locks because you built big as shit. Matter of fact, fuck that. Your name come with an S on the end. You're a plural ass nigga. Paul Pose. Ain't no way they thought you was one person. I'm just saying. So anyways, basically this nigga Jorno meets Popo and he gives him this lighter. He says, look, you can't let this lighter go out. And I'm like, 
Oh, that's simple enough. But then he has to leave without getting caught by the guards that were guarding this big ass the popo. You know you a nigga that got pulled when you locked up and you still the capo. You still making moves like this nigga was locked up and still doing his thing. I can't hate on that. Nigga. I ain't gonna lie. Anyway, shorty guards start rubbing on this man Giorno, and I ain't gonna hold you. If I was him, it would have got wicked in there. I'm just saying. But what he ends up doing is putting a lighter in his hand. Now she's like, "Open your hand up," and I'm like, "Oh shit! I guess he's about to get caught already." But I forgot about this nigga's stand power, so we changed the whole chemical equation of this motherfucking lighter and change it to a different life form Bro changed it into some flowers talking about here i got some flowers for you head ass now nah, i'm just playing but uh, she let him go but i ain't gonna hold you that's kind of suspicious though like why do you have a flower in your hand and who gave it to you you ain't have a flower when you came in i'm not letting that nigga leave with nothing Popo gave him i guess that's just me though anyways after this Jorno runs into this old he outside doing his thing he minded his business trying to clean up shit but he accidentally spilled some water on the lighter and it went out. After this happened, Popo's stand came out. This nigga pulled out this big ass arrow that y'all might remember from part three. Remember the arrow that was giving niggas hella stands and sh Well, basically the whole point of this test is if you can't make it without, you know, the lighter going out, the stand will come out, stab you, see if you're worthy of getting a stand. And if you get a stand, you pass the test. And woo, look at you. Now you're in the mafia. What the fucking old guy did it. So he got killed for no reason. N enacted pain on a senior citizen for nothing. That was somebody's grandfather. That nigga was just minding his business. He probably was happy as shit to go home. Why well, you probably made him some baked chicken and pudding. Nick had some prune juice to drink when he got home. And you smoked this nigga. Anyways, the sun ends up coming out and I guess defeats this stand. Like, what is this nigga? Robert Pattinson? This nigga, a Dracula ass nigga, A vampire stand? Like, what, what is even happening? Oh, maybe the stand was just projecting what Popo was afraid of. Sunlight and grass. This fat, weird ass nigga. Anyways, Jordan goes back. This fat ass nigga, Popo, in there eating and shit. So him and Popo having this whole discussion about how God forgives and shit. And Popo's like, I even think God forgives murder. This nigga Jorno was like, yeah, all right, nigga. He talking about I'll fight for anything, even over being assaulted. I'm like, God bet. Nigga probably been calling you fat as shit your whole life. Nigga probably was calling him Popo with the cankles. Like, big bitch ass. Man, I'm just saying. Anyways, this nigga Jorno was mad tight, though, about the old dude dying. So we felt like I for an eye. Or in this case, I for a pig. Because he turned this nigga's banana into a gun and smoked this nigga. Jorno was the reason why this nigga Popo is dead and why the whole story started picking up pace. I'm not gonna lie, but nobody knew. Nobody knows that this Jorno did it, which is insane. Anyways, they're saying it was a suicide because there was a gun there and he smoked himself. But how in the f did he get a gun? It doesn't even make any sense. <sighs> Whatever, man. It don't even matter. At this point, Jorno goes to meet Bruno when we meet the homies. We got my homie Mister. This nigga dressed in literally a Super Mario's outfit. Got the blue and red outfit on with the checker print. I'm just saying, nigga, like a checkerboard. I'm just saying. I'm saying Fugo and Narancha, they cool. Narancha like the little nigga of the crew, little badass nigga. And then Fugo, that nigga be, he kind of the scrapper. You feel me? He be, we can make it, make it, make it. You feel me? Then we got a Bakio, the sexy nigga of the crew. I mean, <laughs> all right, Zesty counter, Zesty counter. God damn. I can't do anything. Anyways, then we got a Bakio. You feel me? Like I said, of course, we got the homie Bruno, but you already know him. But before this happens, though, Narancha and Fugo have a whole moment. So Narancha is supposed to be doing his homework because, like I said, he a little nigga. Fugo talking to him about math because he's smart as shit. But he's also very angry. So Narancha's acting like he knows the math, but he messes up. And this nigga Fugo grabs his whole head and starts smacking it against the table. Bro, please, somebody get CPS in here. Why are you beating on this child? But that doesn't even matter, yo. The next part was insane, though. We have to talk about this show y'all know i was not passing this part without talking about it so this nigga journal was sitting there right he drinking tea that they gave him right now i'm not gonna hold you he ends up doing something to stop this from happening i think he turned you feel me one of his teeth into a jellyfish to suck it up but that, that, that first off suck it up paul zesty counter that was crazy but uh, my, my point is they made this nigga or tried to make this nigga drink piss Bro, they put piss in his tea, bro. First off, what kind of weird, sick kind of like, like, ooh, that's some weird shit. That's like some shit like frat people would do. Thank God he used the jellyfish on that, yo. That was crazy. So the whole plan for these niggas now is they want to try to go get this treasure that Popo has hidden somewhere. Now they want to use this treasure to give to the organization so that way my nigga Bruno can become a capo. So they're on the way to the treasure. There's a lot of memes that happen on this shit. We're going to talk about them. I ain't going to lie. We got this little Abakio backstory. We find out that he was a cop already then with that nigga. I ain't gonna hold you because he be pissing at my nigga Jorno a lot, but also this nigga's 12, so I can't respect him. I'm just saying. We find out he got charged for being a dirty cop and letting this man die. I know he's a dirty cop, but I still can't respect this nigga. Yo, he a cop. It is what it is. Now they on a boat and this nigga Narancha is tweaking the f out, yo. They on this boat basically trying to go to this like little island where the treasure's at. He on this 
dancing and shit, they listening to music. But all of a sudden, things go bad because there's some other stand users on this damn shit. And they started getting turned into fucking corn husks going down drains and shit. I'm like, what is happening right now? What kind of combination of stands is this? Niggas going down a drain, Jorno, you know what I'm saying? My nigga, the and shit. Abaki on Bruno, they on the ship looking like, what the fuck is happening? Then all of a sudden, a fly comes around and starts talking crazy to these niggas. Niggas like, don't utter a word from that asshole of a mouth. I'm like, oh my God. What kind of fly is this? And why is he talking so spicy? This fly has no type of principles or morals. This was talking shit. And it's ironic that he was talking shit because all they do is land on shit. I'm just saying. Anyways, they couldn't find another way to stop these niggas. So instead of looking for, a, you know, a practical way to do it, they just sunk the entire ship. Niggas drowned in it. I'm just, you know, shit crazy. Anyways, he came out because he was going to die if he didn't. And bro had a fucking banana on his head. Bro, if you don't get your goddamn donkey cone hairstyle, like, why do you have a what kind of fucking fruit basket shit do you got on your head? Like, why is your hair shaped like that? Anyways, it don't even matter. So these two niggas are talking crazy to each other. And he's like, the moment you even try to stab a Bakio, I'll kill you. Because at this point, he got a Bakio hemmed up. And then this nigga Bruno cut this nigga's head clean off with a zipper. I'm not going to lie to you. This is not the first or last time Bruno's going to pack a nigga up with these zippers, bro. The fact that he be smoking this with zippers is insane to me. But uh, I digress. After this show, the most crazy shit I ever seen happen. And again, this is not the first or last time this will happen in this part. They beat the shit out of this nigga after they got him on the ground, bro. There's a whole scene of them just stomping this nigga. They turned him into the fight back mean literally. Mickey, 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 Mickey. Boot, 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 boot. They are kicking the shit out of this nigga. Bro, it looked like they were trying to play soccer with his body. I'm just saying. They then hooked this nigga up by his eyelids, bro. And they start doing this weird ass JoJo meme where they start dancing in front of him. I'm like, what are they doing right now? Why did y'all break out into you guys serve these? is doing it for little saint right now in front of this dude anyways they find out that bro ratted on him and warned people that they were on the way and i ain't gonna lie yo my nigga mister popped up and was like don't even worry about it because me and my sex bull is about to do it and i was like sex pistols pause zesty counter now nah, i'm just playing though this guy had the six bullets and i ain't gonna lie yo his stand is so crazy bro so anyways in this next part they're on their way to the island they finally get there and this nigga missed is sitting down to eat yo it's mad funny because it's six bullets we see them literally the whole stand or these six different little niggas i think there's some other ones too but uh, there's just like a main six he's start scrapping over little pieces of salami they beating the shit out of each other y'all ain't gonna lie anyways after this Jorno and mister are together yo and there's this whole window scene that went so crazy so this man Jorno got the binoculars he got the radio too he's here basically scoping out the scene seeing what's good with this seeing how many zesty niggas are on the island then he turned the binoculars around and pointed at himself because he's zesty i'm just playing i'm just playing but yo there was a nigga in this little building apparently there's the back entrance and he came in now mister don't know that there's a nigga there he's about to walk across the window and the nigga's gonna see him and that's exactly what happened but Jorno had no other choice he was like oh shit there was a nigga in there over and this mister turned with the quickness and said boom boom now the nigga dropped the blinds and started running so you would assume that he missed but yo that's when the stands real power comes in yo the little nigga was fighting over salami they can control the bullets these niggas be passing the bullets to each other and changing the trajectory of the bullets bro this nigga mister don't even know what was behind this window and still shot he grabs the bullet mid-air throws it and hits this nigga in his leg oh my god after this we get this little mister backstory that i wouldn't even talk about except for there's this one part that's so crazy so there's this woman getting brutally you know what i'm saying r-worded in her car like this guy is beating her up trying to do nasty things to her and this nigga mister wasn't having it. he pulls him out now this dude is deep though it's like four or five of these niggas. they start shooting at him but all the bullets is missing hey, 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 hey. this nigga mister while walking in between their bullet fire that just happens to be missing picks up a gun and literally smokes all of these niggas with it smokes these niggas, bro pookie, pookie, pookie. yo bro, this nigga mister different with a gun yo do not walk up on him thinking that you about to have a gunfight with this nigga bro it's, it's not happening so anyways he's chasing this nigga who has this affixed ability basically can affix you to things but it didn't matter that nigga ain't long for this world because my nigga missed the difference so he sees the blood trail and realizes is on the truck and he's like all right it don't even matter but the truck starts moving i'm like oh my god he looks in there and the driver's like huh and he's like huh you're not the stand user and the driver's like nigga i don't know what's going on he driving scared as shit. this nigga affixed to the driver's seat and shit. i'm like oh man this shit is different so basically he's a really good matchup for this nigga 
missed it though because this affixability can affix the bullet so they don't do any lethal damage he affixes one of the bullets right at the base of this nigga's skull so when he shot him i ain't gonna lie i thought he smoked the nigga he shot the nigga in the, in the fucking head bro but he affixed the bullet so it didn't hit his brain like, okay okay his ability kind of going crazy mr used all his bullets though but then he tells the dude only got one bullet left and i'm like oh shit damn does he only got one bullet left I, I i wasn't counting i ain't gonna lie i can't count past three but then he shoots it bro now he uses arts and craft stand to break the bullet in half but then the little nigga still hit the bullet now he knew that he would have fixed the bullet so he used the bullet to hit the other bullet that was already at the base of the skull into this nigga's brain he smoked this nigga. bro i can't believe i've seen some shit like that bro the bullet got split and he still used half the bullet to shoot the other bullet and oh, this nigga different the truck driver mad as shit though he on some taxi driver shit like i'm not a taxi driver i'm like boy shut your ass up anyways after this they finally get to the place where the treasure is and then we realize that the treasure is in urinals why the fuck did this nigga hide all his treasure in urinals i guess he thought nobody will look there because this fat ass can't use urinals he can't even see his own dick you gotta sit down to pee probably with a pistol on his boots if he tried to nah but honestly though nigga, why did you put the anyways we finally find out what the rest of this whole part is gonna be about because this nigga becomes a capo bruno was a capo now but he has to take the last mission that Popo had from the top 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 boss and that is to protect the boss's daughter and bring her to him safely <sighs> A lot's gonna happen. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. But after they got the girl together, they realized that they're gonna need groceries and supplies and shit. So they send out Narancha to do it. Now, typically, I probably would have picked somebody else that I don't know isn't stupid and isn't a child, but I mean, whatever. Let's send the kid out by herself. Of course, on the way to get groceries, he gets into it with a stand user. Like, well. You know how JoJo's goes, villain of the day, bro. It's just always like that. You go out to do something. Oh, it's a villain here. So anyways, he sees this guy in the car and he starts using his little bomber stand. Now, little bomber is this little airplane that flies around and it shoots nukes and, and it's basically a score streak. I don't know if y'all ever played, uh, I think it was Black Ops 2, but you got the little helicopters that be flying around with you, the swarms and shit. It's basically that. So after he shoots this guy's car up, he gets mad and starts beating up the car. Like, bro looked like he was a, a Street Fighter character. Remember when Ryu was beating the shit out of the car in that one bonus level? That's basically what this nigga was looking like. The the duke and the duke and Bro shot the whole whip up. He even dropped the score streak on the car. Nigga dropped the Moab in there. Tactical nuke inside! Anyways, Narancha got wounded while all this was happening, and then he realized that his, you know, his opponent has a stand that shrinks you once you're wounded. So this guy is shrinking. His shoes getting smaller. He's like, these ain't my shoes. These little. This ain't my car. It's small. He's like, these ain't my shoes. They're too big. This ain't my car. I'm too little. This car is too big. Like, no, nigga, you're shrinking. He finally figures it out, though. <sighs> Anyways, yo, he chases after this guy after this is happening and he gets his head stuck in a fucking grocery door. Like he's going into the store to follow after this nigga. His whole head gets caught in the door on some Looney Tunes shit. Bro, his whole head was stuck in a fucking automatic door. Like, god damn, somebody help this little nigga, man. So anyways, after this has happened, the little dude that he's chasing, he's little himself and he jumps into a drain. And then we get this little backstory on the guy that he's fighting. So this guy snuck a small car into the restaurant, which is actually a huge car, but he shrunk it. And he puts it in this guy's drink. I guess he's supposed to be a assassinating and then he meets up with his homies now as soon as the guy leaves the fucking car expands and blows his whole body up Nick made him swallow what seemed to be a hot wheel and then the hot wheel expanded like a chia pet car and <laughs> blew this nigga up his date was mad as shit had hella blood on her and shit. i'm just saying anyways we also met big ass no chin ass nigga executor head ass nigga pesci nigga look like spongebob hell it's like where's your chin at <sighs> Anyways, it don't even matter. We find out through this Sorbet backstory, and Sorbet's a whole nother character that got smoked, that this group that Pesci is with and all these guys are the ones that have been looking for the boss. Well, the boss got wind of it, and he didn't like it too much. So we sent somebody after Sorbet, and Gelato happened to be there. It's another guy that got smoked, and this guy was cutting up Sorbet into pieces. Gelato was so scared by what happened, this nigga swallowed his spit. Balls. Zesty counter. This nigga choked on his own saliva and died. Then he put this nigga to little pieces in these paintings and sent them to the group they get the paintings spread them all out and realize that this nigga sorbet's whole body is here yeah stop with the boss bro I i'm just saying back to the main story this nigga started running off and he's riding a rat remember he's the size of uh i don't know midget mac uh peewee from uh, uh 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 from jackass the size of uh my nigga mm bro like he's a little dude i'm just saying but little bomber can see carbon monoxide and he basically 
Is it carbon monoxide, I think? CO2? I don't know science. I was not paying attention. But anyways, you can see that the rat that he's on is breathing heavier because he got a fat ass dude on him. I mean, it's fat to the rat. You know what I'm trying to say. So we went to go smoke him, but the dude got big as this was happening because Lil Bomber's small now because you remember Narancha shrunk. So he ain't do no damage. But after this happened, my man got cut again. And Narancha started getting really small this time. Small enough that this could put him in a glass bottle with a very venomous spider. Well, it wouldn't normally be venomous, but Narancha too small so it's a very venomous spider i i, I don't know bro it, <laughs> i didn't go a lot though this started mixing the spider with a piece of glass he had it was like make it make it make him stab this spider was different he got back on all eight legs this nigga with two spider webs <laughs> and it bit this nigga. i ain't gonna lie i thought he was fighting spider-man in there for a minute so at this point this nigga used little bomber for the last time and shot at him it didn't work that grab little bomber because it's a small ass toy plane at this point he was like yo i just told you this shit gonna work bro also dropped the map out of his pocket when he got small that just literally gave them the directions the where he was going so he could reverse it and find out where they were at good job narancha good job yo but luckily this wasn't shooting at him and he was shooting at a gas tank in a car that was behind him the car exploded and then this narancha you feel me breaking the whole stands focus gets big again nigga got small though because he was like bro you are not about to shoot me I, 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 on dave bro started running off crazy i ain't gonna lie but there was so much flames around the co2 couldn't tell you feel me little bomber where he was at and that's when i realized this nigga narancha is a fucking insane psycho ass nigga bro because he blows up all the cars on the street he's like i'll just burn down the whole street and then the whole city but this nigga was not playing yo he got big after that he was like oh nah you're not about to put me on fire nigga. on oh, god you're not about to human torch me on oh, god there was no firefighter in sight bro they had their final clash my nigga narancha was too fast bro he lit this nigga up like 50 cent he put more than nine bullets in this nigga on oh, god he did finally narancha comes back after he smokes this nigga and they got a message from the boss that they have to get a key for a vehicle to take trish to him safely abagio fugo and giorno decide to go get the key i was kind of excited about this part though because i ain't gonna lie fuck with my nigga fugo he on some aggressive shit but like he on some real nigga shit too though so they go out do 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 and they see this mirror now fugo starts freaking out because there's a guy behind the pillar in the mirror but abagio and giorno were like what are you talking about i, I there ain't nobody in no pillar what are you are you off a perk y'all fitting right now are you tweaking like whoa, what's happening he's like no look. but it was too late bro and he gets pulled into the fucking mirror dimension this is different bro got a whole mirror world once he's in there he thinks that he can use his stand so he releases smoke perp and he realized <laughs> i can't believe i said smoke perp i think it's called like uh smoke purple or it might be called like purple something i, I i'm just gonna call it smoke perp because it's funny i ain't gonna lie but he realized he's fucked, bro because his stand got released on the outside baggio sees us and immediately tells this nigga Jordan to back up he's like nah this nigga smoke purse got a virus ability bro you got the COVID 19 stand basically it releases this gas which is why i kept calling it smoke perp and once you get you know around this gas you get this virus that melts you from the inside out anything that it touches gets infected and anything that's like outside of five meters won't get affected by the gas D just to let y'all know so anyways the was like man fuck all that he wants to dip off and go get the key Jorno was like hell no we about to save my mans inside fugo is in there getting fucking mixed though it doesn't even matter so baggio starts running anyway which alerts at the mirror nigga. now fugo was about to die but since abagio ran off the mirror dude was like well, maybe i should just go see what he's doing fugo got saved by the bell i ain't gonna lie on his zach morris shit i ain't gonna hold you we chases after him and realizes that the dog mosaic is what holds the secret but there's a convenient shard of glass that's just standing right by the dog mosaic why is there a piece of mirror here I, anyways he grabs abagio up through this mirror but it's really this nigga abagio stand yo and he starts getting mixed make it 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 after realizing this though he stays crouched in order to take a Baggio's arm and after he does this he uses this nigga's arm as an entrance to make this nigga an arnold palmer nigga turn this nigga into a half and half bro had this nigga half stand half body i'm not gonna hold you this nigga Baggio was not playing with him though and he cut his own arm off to grab the key bro this nigga de-armed himself became mega man to grab the i love the mega man jokes <laughs> i ain't gonna hold you anyways he runs off with his hand to go give jorno the key bro chased after this nigga and fell right into a trap though but he thought that he was up one he was like ah you know this dumbass nigga jorno didn't even leave he's just standing there didn't even matter though bro because as soon as he gets close yo and pulls him in he had the smoke perp virus on his cell he affected himself to affect this mirror ass nigga. so mirror bitch realizes he's like man only got one chance and he only permits himself to leave the mirror himself 
that is unaffected. So his arm gets completely lost, but he saves himself. <sighs> this nigga became Shanks to get out of there. Unfortunately for him, Jorno turned a snake that was nearby into a brick that had the brick on the inside slither over to the location of his body in the real world, which allowed this nigga Fugo to know where he was and smoke hurt was there. To mix this nigga, bro, when I tell you that he punished this nigga with smoke per, oh my god. Make it, 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 make it. Like, oh my Jesus Christ. Anyways, I thought Jorno was gonna die, but he ends up using the snake to create an antivirus. He's fine. So they get the key and they go to the train station. We got Fugo, we got Guido, Trish. You know what I'm saying? They in the car, Fugo looking at her titties. Guido, you know what I'm saying? Mr. looking at her titties. This man Fugo falling to some titties. I'm like, bro, what is happening right now? I just wanted to talk about titties, bro. Titties. <laughs> Anyways, they get to the train station and pineapple ass, cucumber ass, pineapple, SpongeBob house head ass Nick Pesci and his bro, uh, Prosciutto, I think is how you say his name. And I don't know what that his name is for real, for real, but he got a fly ass suit on. They find Bruno and the others, but Bruno is having a hard time figuring out what this key is for. He's like, oh, there's no keyhole here. What am I supposed to do? And then he looked and he saw a turtle with a mold for a key in it. And I was like, what kind of shit is that? Anyways, he put it in. Oh, zesty counter. He put the key inside of the turtle shell and then he runs into this train. Now, Pachetto, Pachetto? I'm just gonna call this nigga fly suit. Fly suit and this nigga Pesci run in and they're like, Yo, where the fuck are these niggas at? There's clearly a turtle on the ground in front of him with a key in its back, but for some reason, they just don't see it. I, I, I... Anyways, bro, I, I don't know how they didn't see this turtle, but it, it doesn't even matter. The turtle is an actual stand. Now, inside this stand, it's just like a room that's got cold drinks and stuff in it. They just chilling in here. That's what the stand is. That's how they're getting there safely, I guess. Now, Fly Suit has had enough, though. He's like, nah, I'm gonna activate my stand. They gotta be somewhere on this train. And this nigga's stand is insane, bro. This is how we find out what a stand does. So, Narancha's in there. He's, sitting, he's like, man, I'm hot. My shoulders are stiff. Wish I had something warm for him. This nigga body hurting and shit. He's sitting down. You know what I'm saying? And Narancha didn't drink nothing though. Keep that in mind. He looking through and all of a sudden he go to eat a banana. The banana start crumbling and shit. I ain't gonna lie. Banana was looking like me after I had the Henny dick for like three hours and I was stroking crazy and then my dick. Oh, hold on. I was going crazy. Hold on. What am I talking about right now? Hey, <sighs> Gotta keep it rated PG. Anyways, this nigga Narancha is in there turning old, bro. And that's when we learn that this nigga fly suit got the aging stand, bro. His stand be aging niggas until they die. Bro got the Grim Reaper stand. I ain't gonna hold you. It's even this little kid like, mama, what? Wake up. You see him in a train car. This nigga is old as shit. Like he got the Benjamin button. I ain't gonna lie. So anyways, they find out that the aging is only affecting people based on their body temperatures. If you're cooler, the effect doesn't work as much, which is why the people that drink drinks, Bruno and Mista, are aging a little bit slower. Mista decides he has to go out and assassinate this nigga so he gets to going. But he takes two little pieces of ice with him to try to keep him fresh. You know what I'm saying? But after he comes out of here, he sees this AC button and he's like, oh, I'll just, you know, turn the AC on. That'll do, you know, that'll do it. That'll keep everybody cool and then he goes to touch it how fucking dumb do you think these enemies are you think they just didn't think about that it was a trick this whole time cucumber head ass nigga had a fishing line stand and it was a trap on the ac button now this nigga mister is trying to shoot this fucking fishing line with a sex pistol he's like psh, 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 nothing's happening but then he starts shooting the bullets towards pesci and i'm like okay what is he doing that for and he realizes that this nigga probably is keeping himself cool and he was right because his bullets see that little ice cup and they hit it now this dumb ass Pesci had this a hook, line, and sinker about to kill him, but let go of his stand so we could try to get the ice back. That was clearly gonna fall and melt. You're not getting the ice back, dumbass. It don't even matter though, because Mister came in with the strap ready to smoke this. I ain't gonna hold you. But there's an old ass dude in the hallway of this like little train car. And he's like, I'm so tired. I was eating a steak. And I was like, what are you talking about? Bro trying to tell him his food fetishes about his dried up old big ass steak he was eating. And then we find out that this nigga was really prosciutto that aged himself up to blend in with everybody. They gave himself a social security check to make sure he looked like everybody else on the card. And he aged this nigga mister up crazy. After he has this nigga mister dried up on the ground like a fucking bag of leaves, he beats his brother Pesci up because he did some dumb ass shit. And then he says, you gotta know, once you're ready to kill somebody, you just gotta do it. And he Shoots this nigga mister three times in the head. I'm like, damn, yo, my nigga mister is dead right now. Like, god damn. After this, they go to the cab because they realize that Trish is probably in the cab somewhere. He goes in there and he asks his big chin Pesci about what he remembers seeing. And Pesci finally does something smart. He's like, oh yeah, there was something black under this seat. He gets all defeated about it, but even this nigga prosciutto was like, yo, nah, 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 you actually helped. Cause there's some turtle shit on the ground. He didn't know what kind of animal it was at first, but we know there's 
fucking turtle shit on the ground. This nigga, yo, what did the turtle eat? Anyways, because he sees this turtle shit on the ground, he starts punching everything in the cab because he figures that this animal is somewhere in here. But right before they can attack through this nigga turtle, bro, this man Pesci like, wait a minute, there's somebody missing. Mister wasn't really dead, Joe. And he sent this number six to come in and tell this nigga, yo, it's a niggas on the way. And he hops out of his zipper and starts mixing these niggas. Bro, I'm not gonna lie. Mickey, 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 Mickey. He even knocks the big chin ass nigga out. Yo, right into this nigga Prochetto's trap that we said, yo, he just told you not to come out. And yo, I seen one of the coldest things ever, yo. This nigga must have ultra instinct or something because he uns zipped his head to dodge a nigga's punt. They started mixing him again. But unfortunately, he got hot burning calories and started aging quicker. But that was all of his plan. Nigga got old and got grabbed up so he could make them fall out of the train together. I was like, yo, this nigga Bruno was different. So they're on side of the train at this point hanging there because Pesci done grabbed this nigga with the whole fishing line. So they sitting there fighting over the line like, like nah, nigga. I'm not letting you get back in the train. You going with me, nigga. Oh, God. But Six had told Bruno about energy changing. Who the hook is on. Then he punches the hook. And Prosciutto falls off because of it. At this point, I'm thinking everything cool because the agent started reversing. But then this big chin ass having his brother seemingly die in front of him changed his whole entire resolve and he became deadly Nick started evolving i ain't gonna lie he hooked bruno up but yo this prosciutto was not giving up he's still on the bottom of the train aging everybody big chin ass nigga is determined to kill bruno though so bruno says the only thing i can do now to get unhooked is to unzip my whole body this nigga zipped himself into a million pieces. Bro, look like he was getting himself ready for Tupperware. Nigga meal prepped himself. He even cut his own heart in half. Bro, after Big Chin thought that there wasn't nobody in the cab, he tries to go save his brother. That was dumb. This nigga Bruno, through a stroke of luck, literally his body parts coming back together because the train got stopped because of this nigga Pesci, walks out of the side of the train and greets this nigga. But this nigga Pesci was mad as shit, yo, and tried to mix this nigga but Bruno took his own line and broke his neck with it. Bro, broke this nigga's neck. First off, how you break his neck, yo? How you get the line around that dumbass missing chin of his, bro? His head big as shit. Where's his chin, neck, and head all meet? I literally can't figure it out. Bro has a fucking, yo, he looked like the Veggie Tales. nigga. I'm just saying. Anyways, he broke this nigga's fucking neck, though. This man, Prosciutto, on the ground, he's dead. And on top of that, when this all was happening, Trish finds out she got a stand. Now, I know y'all are probably wondering, oh my God, send what happened next. Guess y'all got to get them 15,000 likes.